Hi, welcome or welcome back. This is the Daily Dharma and my name is Dina. Thank you so much for joining in. And I have pre-laid out the cards for us today. Most of our messages are going to be timeless messages. So whenever you find this message, it is the right time for you. But that being said, not all messages are going to be for you. So you have to take what resonates out of this reading and leave the rest, of course. And if this resonates, you know what to do. So out of these pre-laid out cards, we're seeing at the top 43, the transition card. So this tells me that there's a great big change underway, almost a, an abrupt about face as far as your ideas with a situation. And what I'm seeing down the center, prosperity here falls directly underneath the transition card. So this can be having put in a lot of effort, not seeing a lot of results, and then all of a sudden you begin to see, one, 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 the manifestations that you've been putting into practice starting to bear fruits. So on that second row, our cards are authority, number 10, compassion, number 15, 36, prosperity in the center, discernment, and remembrance on that line. We've got two other rows. So on that row, we're having, we're wishing for a change in our blessings. We want to see the results that we've been manifesting. We want our efforts to be worth something, to bear some fruit. And we've been putting in the effort. We've been trying to transmute the ego here, trying to use our intuitive logic to discern which way for us, what is right, what is wrong, who's taking us for a ride, and who supports us when we're not there. So 10 authority. Authority reminds us that true authority is powerful, directed, and realized, yet receptive, receptive, wise, and loving. And I think that's really key with having compassion next. It's the way that we utilize our leadership potential, the way that we express our messages out into the world. Uh, yeah, so the same thing about saying that not all messages resonate, take what resonates and leave the rest. In our day-to-day, -day, our friend's advice can be the same thing. The memes that you might see on social media, the commercials out there, or whatever you might come in contact with. Many people have endless stories of suffering for you to resonate with. But one of the messages coming through for me has been, well, you have to recognize when those stories are habits that are justifying why you haven't moved into the prosperity that you think that you're manifesting versus having the accountability and authority to say, okay, I can see clearly through the messages and through the BS that I would self-sabotage and block my own blessings with, um, but I can have compassion for myself and, and then when I know better, I can do better. Taking accountability, witnessing myself from a dispassionate, detached perspective, perhaps, in this situation, right? So whatever has gone on in the past, we're seeing this differently, and this transition of thought is transitioning our ability to manifest. It's literally shifting gear into using the law of attraction the way that we really want to, the really the way that we really intend it to be. At the end of that row, the remembrance card is telling us about those old stories because the bookends here are being in one's authority with compassion and discerning what things, what messages and what old belief systems are not true, maybe never were true etc. And so these are the things that we're being told have in some way blocked our prosperity and abundance and all whatever your passionate manifestation is at this time.
The next row down, we have four cards. Six, third eye chakra, the brow chakra relating to our internal discerning mechanism. Our, it's not the gut intuition, right? It is the, the sense, and we, this is followed by the belief card in the next row here. But third eye chakra is about the ability to perceive things clearly. And I'll even read that. It says, the frequency of the third eye chakra, the indigo flower of life, supports our intuition and our inner knowing, our imagination, and our psychic powers. It's also that 360 degree sight that allows us, as the dreamer's mind, to be able to act out of out of um, context with the laws of the material world. The three the third eye lets us tap into our magical potential. And I did see magic on the pre-shuffle, but it's not here now. I had a really great pre-layout with the feminine stepping into the solar plexus with authority and the masculine stepping into the crown chakra issues for trust and discernment. So there's potentially all of these things going on inside of all of us. And today, just briefly with the astrology, which isn't as timeless, right? But there, the messages always influence us. It's an ongoing narrative that we're working through in our lives. So right now we have Mars is minutes away from crossing paths with Neptune. Neptune moving so much slower, Mars is going to surpass and then move signs into the sign of Aries, home sign, fiery Aries is where Mars really has that fresh burst of energy into the springtime, the new beginnings. And there's this new instinctual impetus for change and momentum and shifting gears. That transition is coming with this shift, I feel. And then shortly thereafter, two more degrees, Mars will be encountering Jupiter, Jupiter now on two degrees in Aries, and then on going from there. And there's so many aspects right now in the chart following the lunar eclipse. The, I, the one aspect that seems to be where the, the bulk of all of the aspects are, are pointing towards that Mars-Neptune conjunction today, because we have well, Mars conjunct Neptune there at approximately the 25th degree of Pisces. We can see that as meditation and compassion. We do have that compassion on the board, ruling with, with love and the highest possible good of all in our mind in that highest intentionality, working with the powers that be to clear our own ego before taking action and before manifesting things that we'll regret later, but not maybe in the moment. In the moment. Uh, it can also be using our passionate senses deceptively or naively where we don't worry about the implications of our, of our actions. So this is opposed to this compassionate authority. So in this way, um, I'm feeling that the message today for, for those viewing, we have under the deck crown chakra, solar plexus chakra, heart chakra, root chakra with the synergy card. It's as though all of our chakras are being cleared out, cleaned up, aligned, shined up, and it's like the tumblers in uh, the keyhole of a lock. When the correct key goes in, you'll see all of the different notches giving way as that particular key hits that particular lock. And so it's like that that combination of healing and dedication and self-worth efforts and self-care and advocating for our own worth with healthy self-pride and boundaries and, and asking and demanding for some semblance of of respect from those that are around us or else we go elsewhere right there's this 
there's this knowledge that we're stronger, we're more solid, and that although we might need to take some great risks to get those great rewards, that now we have much more discernment because of all of the, the accumulated experiences in our past, present, uh, what we've dreamed, dreamt about, and where we've wanted to go in the past versus how that dream switches. Like maybe as a small child, you wanted to be a, a veterinarian or something, and, and now you're seeing that although you want to work with animals, you also want to do something more socially minded, let's say. And so maybe you take your work with animals and then you move it into a different direction. Maybe you didn't finish veterinary school because somehow it wasn't exactly the right path. Or, you know, let's just say veterinarian is absolutely just something I picked out of nowhere for someone. But it could be anything. Many of us started with this ideal pounded into us that you have to go to college, you have to get your career on lockdown, you have to set up your retirement plan, you have to have your favorite sports team, and et cetera, et cetera. And perhaps the pathway that you've chosen has surprised you, but there's something here coming through where the reasons for these changes and the path that you took that was so unique and maybe seemed random at times, it's coming through with this idea of, oh, that's what I've been working up to all of this time. Look at this accumulation of this thing that I was so interested in and I thought it was a wasted hobby because others told me it was nerdy or whatever, but now I have all these resources that actually fit into this next thing that now I'm working into how can I take this hobby that was underestimated and and not appreciated by those around me and transition that into some type of it doesn't have to be about money but we do have prosperity on the board this can be the accumulated morality and intentionality and the healing potentials that that you have working with another person and and it's like all of your chakras are working within in tandem with each other in that perfect way that something or someone or yourself is acting as an activation for your healing and you're you're starting to come out the other side we're seeing this as coming down the other side of that tall mountain that we've been climbing so following third eye chakra we have 18 cosmic flower emergence and divine masculine on this rope so yes yeah, something that we've always envisioned something that we've been holding with an extreme amount of faith that may have faltered or slipped from time to time but it's something unrelenting about ourself or our our vision our it's that the one thing that stays steady like in the veterinarian thing it was animals was the connection but if we always shame ourselves for not finishing veterinarian school oh i'll never be a vet well you can still be um, an animal healer Maybe you won't need shots. Maybe you'll use healing hands. Maybe you'll just work with therapy dogs. There's avenues in whatever it is that you care about. There's a way that you can use that in a way that is personally exceptionally rewarding, whether or not it has to do with money. But on the board here, it's suggesting that there's prosperity when you follow your bliss. And on the last row here, we have belief, 11. 39, romantic love right in the center under prosperity and transition. And 19, delight. So, divine masculine is touching emergence and delight. And so that's like, uh, our, it's something calling us forward. The masculine is that it's the bee that wants to pollinate the flowers. It's the, um... The shiny things that the crow goes to collect. Oh yeah, collection. Somebody has a collection that is that may be worth something. Maybe you've inherited something that you don't know the value of or some old velvet Elvis picture or something somebody's got in a grandma's attic that they're clearing out. I don't know what it is for you. But for many, it does look like we continue to have an evolving 
idea and narrative here with romantic love and I don't probably every time need to say it doesn't have to be sexual romantic love we can be um, romanticizing about that future that future we always wanted because before as children before it was objectified as the well it's maybe always for some of us been objectified as a material thing a material journey and you got to get your money, rise and grind, and then retire. So you waste all of your productive years where you can go out and skip and jump in the sunshine uh, in a closed-up institution under someone else's authority without compassion, without true prosperity, putting that money away for a rainy day when you're older and tired maybe, you know? So maybe somebody's looking at retirement, uh, and others probably looking for, I mean, everybody's at a different path, but there's probably many looking for what path to take after high school even. I mean, there's people on various sides of the argument here, but yes, yeah, something's definitely growing. Something is made, uh, revealing itself. And with our, with the healing, in the Divine Masculine, we're ready to pursue something. Yeah, the bees in the cosmic flower. I was just seeing that again. Um, so maybe there's a lot of options that somebody, perhaps even someone that really identifies with their masculine polarity, is looking around at their options, and one is emerging as the one, the preferred object of affection, someone that holds similar belief styles, someone who helps them to see through their own energy. Very nice. So this is a very, this romance, if this is a romantic thing, or if this new opportunity, let's call it, whatever new opportunity is helping you to have that momentum and desire to start to self-improve, start to see yourself in a new light, whatever this uh, is, it's a catalyst for you to fall back in love with your own energy signature and with your own bloom cycle. There, are, I mean, think of yourself as a beautiful perennial plant that comes back every year. Every once in a while we need a little bit of pruning around the edges where we've kind of gotten astray thing out here um, or gotten out of alignment over here so we cut out things that don't serve but then ultimately every every season every new chapter we have the opportunity to put our energy either down below the surface into the root of the issue gathering up all of the vitamins and nutrients from down below the surface of mother Gaia reaching deep for that nourishing shadow and light aspects of ourselves to really integrate that and pull that up into ourselves and appreciate that with compassion, forgiveness, mercy and then to use that energy and put that out into our limbs, out into our healing hands and from those hands emerge the blossoms that people find so magnetic and beautiful about us. That's our, our sacred nectar that we offer the world. It's our, our healing voices, our healing eyes. The, the eyes are the windows to the soul. And even if somebody smiles in your face, you can very often, and especially our empaths out here, you can tell what somebody's feeling in the moment. And if that's you, don't allow those projected um, issues to do anything except allow you to reevaluate the discernment of how you how you really are and not how they are painting you to be to be who you are supposed to be from the beginning if you haven't done anything wrong don't allow anybody to gaslight you um, and you don't need to feel that they are out against you or doing it on purpose unless you can tell that they are your own discretion here but 
Many people have been raised by gaslighters. They gaslight themselves. They don't understand when and where they sometimes say things. I also can be guilty of these things because uh, there's still patterns evolving, right? We're all doing the best that we can. So if that's you, just keep on working on that because it looks like those roots are drawing up that energy and that something is just about to burst into full bloom here with that prosperity card it's the key in the center and romantic love is here and I'm hearing also it's partially to do with with the law of attraction it also has to do with that law of abundance feeling that we're already prosperous helps opportunity find us it's like People often will ask me, oh, well, I have such and such, and I thought of you. Would you like this? I can attract almost anything randomly, and it might take a little time, but if I hold an intention, I can draw things to me magnetically, and many of us can. And so it's by feeling that, that we're deserving and imagining yourself with this, it doesn't have to be a material item, this bonding, this friendship, this opportunity, doors opening, people being friendly with us. We can, in our meditative time, after you've cleared your energy, we can manifest in the way that, um, by affirming energy, by affirming our prosperity in advance, by being thankful and grateful for what already is, and witnessing that no matter how hard it is, the common denominator in all of our life is that here we are, we've made it every single day so far, and every time that I slip, I land on my feet. Every time I mess up, I have the opportunity to learn and to handle myself differently. Even if there's no uh, time and space for a, a proper apology between people, it's there. And I'm feeling that too, like maybe there's somebody from your distant past that you keep Remember, now that there's this new romantic um, opportunity, something that's really calling you forward, perhaps there's some old lingering shame or, or old guilt that, that needs to be karmically released and maybe you can't make it forward without giving that forgiveness or asking for that forgiveness or whatever. And if somebody has already passed by the time that you come to that, or if you have no contact or something like that, you can always write all of these thoughts and emotions out very, everything that you could imagine, hold nothing back, write absolutely every little thing down that you can just put on that paper and try to be as countable as you can, try to be as honest as you can, because some of those people that we need to forgive don't maybe deserve our forgiveness on one level, but even though they say forgiveness is for us, not them, it's hard to conceptualize that, but many of us are reaching the point where we recognize that if we fail to release our blame, then we fail to release the karmic attachment. So whether or not that person is gone, whether or not we don't encounter that person anymore, if we keep holding on to and attaching to lower energies, they continue to dominate our, our, our energy and our opportunities coming in and changing to keep us in those old cycles. It's the hamster wheel. So, okay, I'm going to leave the code cards there. We're definitely learning to work with our energies in a new way. And with that delight card there, I absolutely love that. It's something has made us very happy. We see something coming. We can feel it and sense it with our with all of our hearts. So trust trust your intuition on something that is coming to pass. And also that it looks here too like the masculine, but it can be just your assertive inner nature is seeing something that they desire very much and it may be that they have budding emerging feelings for another individual or that they just are recognizing 
what brings them peace and prosperity and what things they just are no longer going to tolerate. You know, I had to tell somebody that myself recently is that my peace and serenity is more valuable to me and my self-respect is more valuable to me than acceptance by others who would attempt to dominate, coerce, manipulate, or otherwise mess with me. That day is over. Straddling worlds, wandering between realms, number 52. I'm seeing this as somebody who's felt defeated in the past and has been operating as an earth angel perhaps here using their crown to perhaps do a lot of energy work in their inner world, in their inner meditations. So whether or not you have a healing practice where you're seeing clients, I'm seeing someone that works intentionally with their energy and wishing that they, it, it seems like somebody's working possibly even with, with St. Germain. Ascended Master St. Germain to transmute energies or maybe Archangel Michael to cleanse and cut through any injustices and to help bring truth, clarity, and justice to a situation. Galactic Mushroom, the Divine Matrix, number 24, <laughs> that's coming out over Cosmic Flower and Emergence. So... Oh, geez, the dad jokes. Um, there's this old joke about fungus, fungi to be with. It's so silly. But anyways, maybe this is part of it. Like, uh, We don't like to be around people that are dominant and always want to be the one in the it's lime light. I'm hearing somebody who tries to... Whether or not it it's um, with dominance and in harsh power, it could be with with fun. It could be with could be with some psychedelics. I mean, I don't condone anything here publicly. YouTube wouldn't like that very much, would they? But I mean, I'm just seeing someone seeing through something with a chakra activation. So this has a bit of a an Alice in Wonderland, take this and it'll make you smaller, take this and it'll make you larger. This idea of a spiritual shamanic journey where someone is connecting to the fabric of the divine feminine, the fabric of their reality, and emerging through the limitations of their ancestral karma so that they can rewrite what their destiny is. I'm seeing um, this smoke rising. And I don't know how much this camera will reveal, but there's that face. See above their head. It's like a smoking volcano there. And I'm seeing it as... Um, it could be somebody that has has remorse for ways of behaving in the past. We already talked about shame and guilt for that explosive, toxic behavior. But then I'm also seeing somebody who, again, has gathered their spiritual powers and has been perhaps astral traveling, using their energy to gather up their spirit, like the Naga. It's the energy that in meditation and astral travel comes through the crown and explores the cosmos in that way. Let's move on. Winter's Dream Gestation Period, again, number 63. That's a snail-like figure there, but resting. So we were talking about the cycles and gathering the nutrients from down below, cutting the dead branches. Um, there's definitely a transition of 
feeling some sense of scarcity or loss or rejection. There's ice here that's that's all around. But rejection I'm hearing is God's or spirit's protection and things that seem to go around and around with that snail shell. It's almost like that golden ratio Fibonacci sequence is like that's the awakening code. It's the perfect branching that creates the stepping stones up and around this spiral so that we can ascend our own our own karmic heritage and and our generational karma as well. It's like somebody that had some heavy issues to transmute. And I'm hearing also that it's not that we were charged to carry this huge load. I believe that many of us asked to carry a heavy load, but so many of us, when we got here, became so overwhelmed that we needed to check out from time to time. We needed to slip back into habits, to coping mechanisms, or seasonally, we retreat back into the shell, we retreat back into our hermitage, and we check back in with the sacred self and recreate that sacred space around us, and we level up in that way. And so I'm seeing more and more of this ice and the period of, of scarcity and loss is being left behind because of this emergence in cosmic flower we are the maker. We are the gardener bringing this to a head. Dragon's horde protecting the future, number 12. See, we were talking about gathering. We were talking about items and resources that then become something more. And with this, dragons get, they get a, um, a double meaning a lot of times where they are protecting their treasure, but they also can sometimes identify with the materialism and the lower nature of hoarding. So this, they have um, a little nest egg drawn below this, and oh, and there are two keys with a heart-shaped, um, the part where you put your hand, I don't know what that's called, the tab of the key. I don't know. So yes, this could be in romance, perhaps two people. And the dragon's hoard, what we protect is the inner the inner treasure, the inner sacred space. And so we already talked about the perfect lock and key, and we have transitioned to a prosperous romance down the center here. So I'm definitely seeing like two people have an enormous amount of potential together. And under the deck we have heart home. Compassion, 27. And under that, Horseman, Herald of Change. The Herald of Change is a divine messenger, which means that we probably have already caught a little bit of the scent of what's coming on the next wind for us. And below that, a closing door, completion, number five. Yeah, and we had that close out of a chapter before, and now we're seeing the activation of the chakras which is when your when your chakras become activated sometimes the the shadow self works its way out it wiggles out into the light of day so that we can see it and say oh there you are let me just love you back into a more healed approach a more compassionate way to align with my sense of personal authority and autonomy and autonomy was something that i had written down on the astrology as well so coming full circle back to that, this heart home is being at home within our hearts, within our space, and making that sacred space something that we don't allow others to, to tread upon with their dirty, muddy feet. So Mars conjunct Neptune in Pisces. This is an opportunity to clear our karma, as we've been talking about, and to identify and integrate the subconscious drives and subconscious motives and even the darkest thoughts to perhaps just say them out into, into the open and just forgive ourselves for our trespasses, 
forgive those that have had those awful thoughts about us in return in alleviating the dual manifestation of of bitterness and hatred and ill will is automatically going to sever the karmic ties that have been binding all of us to things that are are heavy and don't serve so this is creating a bigger opportunity for more mercy with others and more compassion in our dealings with others and some of us may note or recommend to another or recommend to ourselves or feel the urge ourselves to help ourselves alleviate this karma and to help ourselves work through these subconscious drives or whatever else we might be looking at more than self-care some people will be really well served by getting into a situation of therapy group therapy um, and I'm hearing that many of us are also encountering this with this new romantic love so somebody who is um, not saving us not being our hero not healing us they are showing us to ourselves and helping us to fall in love with our shadow telling us that perhaps we have been unreasonable in our betrayal of self not verbatim perhaps but yeah we're coming back home into our hearts in autonomy we just had Venus pass by Chiron in Aries and Mars will be coming through there because Chiron also doesn't move as fast so Mars will be crossing over Chiron when it goes through um, Aries later on we'll talk about that more when that is actually happened but Chiron Chiron is that wounded healer aspect where we're encountering the elements of self that we haven't really resolved our love-hate relationship with that push-pull and um, having one foot on the accelerator one foot on the brake all the time just helps us to spin in, in, in circles doing donuts instead of making our way down down the path or down the mountain um, yeah as Venus passes by Chiron she picks up a lot of self-value autonomy personal compassionate authority and especially in partnerships partnerships in finance and that is semi sextile to Uranus which is helping us to liberate from our past and liberate from any self-limiting beliefs liberate from those did I say limit sextile Lilith retrograde in Gemini oh, there's in there's a pursuit of passion too and those subconscious drives yes it's exploring the feminine power through charisma through saying a holy hell no or an f yes <laughs> um yeah it's exploring the the dimensions of sexual magnetism and feminine power on various levels and some will be exploring that others will be exploiting that and so with Neptune and Mars we have to definitely understand the risks inherent to everything and if you're not looking to stay with individuals you know you might want to reconsider because the elements in the air right now have that sense of karma Dharma so make sure that you're on your highest possible intentional path and that doesn't mean like crude it doesn't mean um, goody goody it doesn't mean people pleasing it means you're authentic you're speaking up with a balanced ideal an idea behind where you're going and why you're doing and and your self-value etc and that for others what else do we want to cover so yeah so Mars and, and Mars conjunct Neptune is that most highly aspected area and so we're seeing that sextile the Sun which is bringing a lot of uh, clarity to what needs to be worked out and will help us if we take the steps towards that if we have the intention towards that our healing in our pathway will be will be aided for our benefit 
and we're seeing it's aspecting the nodes, trying the south node, semi-sextile, the north node. So it's, it's going to take more effort to get to our highest path than it is to fall back and slip back into old habit patterns. But in the same token, some of those uh, born in habits create a lot of resources in, in aspects, personality, uh, I want to say items in our toolbox, coping mechanisms, uh, clear boundaries. If you've been compromised in the past, you're going to see that and you're going to probably put too many boundaries for a little while. So the past also serves the future if we can use it correctly by saying, uh, I've seen this before, I'm not going to let this happen, this exploitation or this manipulation. What tells you that anybody has changed? Changed behavior is the only thing. Words are just words. And we have a semi-sextile to Saturn. So that semi-sextile is, um, it grounds that issue again with karma and dharma. So as we work for the highest, as we work with our intentions, and as we work with sharing our prosperity, our gifts, our love, and our light forward instead of dwelling and sharing and airing our grievances and complaints, we're in that attitude of gratitude. We're, we're like, yeah, well, this happened, this happened, this happened, but oh my goodness, look at where I'm at because of all this. I am in a different position. I know more clearly where I'm going and I am ready. So yeah, there's, there's more that could be said at all times, but I think that is enough for one day. Let's close with a down message today. So much for those 20 minute reads. I appreciate all of you guys that, that come and tune into these messages. I just love to come and share what comes through. Sometimes I leave these readings and I, my head is literally buzzing with the energy trying to come through. I'm feeling too like somebody clearing out their chakras may be causing a sinus drain, clearing out addictive patterns, shadowy aspects may cause you to feel very tired. You may need to take more naps or if you can't afford a nap and you're at a job, you need to maybe take a five minute portion of your work break and, and just close your eyes and just breathe and let go of whatever. Just to reconnect as often as possible with your reasons for, for whatever you're doing. And to recognize that perhaps you have enough in your nest egg to make some huge transition that you've been dreaming about for the longest time. Two cards flipped out as I said that. Oh, nice. Under the deck we have seven. And flipping out the top card is the eight. So we have a line. And then behind that is the 60. Let's read them in order. Seven. Oh, I thought I had the seven card out here too, but it's the six. Oh, we do have crown chakra under the deck. And also, if I didn't mention, that's one, two, three, four, five out of seven chakras are showing up on the deck, out of the deck again today. So, okay, number seven, the Tao is it infinite, eternal. Why is it eternal? It was never born. Thus, it can never die. Why is it infinite? It has no desires for itself. Thus, it is present for all things. The master stays behind. That's why she is ahead. She's detached from all things. That's why she's one with them. Because she's let herself go. Oh. Because she has let go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. Take some time for yourself. If you feel like, like something has been let go, forgive that. That is evidence of your past. That is not evidence of your future. You are a being in becoming. There was something else there too. Infinity, infinite, and eternal. 
and the dragon's horde. And okay, yes, there's something about a soul, an accumulated soul journey because the the dragon's head and the dragon's tail are the nodes, and we're encountering our karma. This is a huge release of karma for many of us. Take time to meditate on what that message means for you. We'll not go through that and try to pick it in. It's too specific for so many viewers that have the potential to tap into this. Number eight. The supreme good is like water, which nourishes all things without trying to. It is content with the low places that people disdain. Thus, it is like the Tao. In dwelling, live close to the ground. In thinking, keep to the simple. In conflict, be fair and generous. In governing, don't try to control. In work, do what you enjoy. In family life, be completely present. When you're content to be simply yourself, and don't compare or compete, everybody will respect you. Especially if you're moving into a new situation, don't compare everything because comparisons are also based on past manifestations. Be willing to have that beginner's mind. 60. Governing a large country is like frying a small fish. You spoil it with too much poking. Center your country in the Tao, and evil will have no power. Not that it isn't fair, but you'll be able to step out of its way. Give evil nothing to oppose, and it will disappear by itself. So that's interesting. It, it's definitely talking about the way that we use our authority being something that could either offer a raise or a new position somebody that's advocating for for the personal evolution and best practices for the lowest people on the in the company somebody may be looking to begin a company that has employees So yeah, don't prod and poke and bother the people that, or your children, governing a home, right? We had home in here. So yeah, that's so interesting. Where was that? Okay, yes, in a dwelling, in thinking, in conflict, in governing, in work, and in family life. Keep it simple, stay humble, be fair, and be generous because you have more than you perhaps have identified as part of your nest egg of abundance in just your spiritual riches. Don't try to control. Allow other people to govern themselves. That's what the autonomy is telling us. We can't maintain these control and power dynamics that we hated with than our children or our employees because it's a, it's dysfunction. Don't support dysfunction because we speak to others how we speak to our inner child. And if that doesn't feel good, others don't feel good. We all know this, right? But sometimes we don't see it within ourselves. So do what you enjoy and be completely present with it because you deserve to be absolutely delighted and in love and to work with something that shares your belief structure all right i have talked us another 50 minute video here so please if this resonated you got this far please do consider like sharing subscribing commenting all of those things help to increase the algorithms and help to promote this message for those that need to hear it and it helps to share your vibration with us so that we can read your energy more specifically in the future. Helps to grow the channel. So thank you so much. I wish you all the best and, and have fun with this transition. It is all about having fun with the self-development of 
moving away from that old patriarchal, toxic masculine, toxic feminine, um, wounded feminine masculine, and using our authority to work towards something valuable, something purposeful, together with others, and with the entire wholeness of self and our intentionality. Good luck. Love y'all. Take care.